In this video, we will be discussing velocity and acceleration as they apply to physics. Acceleration is going to be the name that we give to any process where there is a uh, change in velocity. Now, because velocity has both speed and direction, velocity is a vector. And so there's only two ways that you can accelerate. You can change your speed, you can change your direction, or you could change both. So before we move on, let's clarify the difference between speed, velocity, and acceleration. Now speed is the rate of motion or the rate of change in position, and it's going to be expressed as distance uh, per unit of time or distance divided by time. Uh, it is a scalar quantity with dimensions of distance and time. And so when we look at speed, um, we're going to look at that on a separate video. Velocity, uh, when we look at velocity, it is going to be a vector quality because it contains both magnitude and direction. So while both speed and velocity are measured in the same physical units, uh, velocity is different from speed because velocity includes a direction. Acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity, and so it is also a vector quantity because it has dimensions of length and time squared. So the metric unit for acceleration would be meters per second squared. So to accelerate an object would be to change its velocity, and you can do this by either its speed or direction, as we mentioned before. It can be um, in a straight path or it can be a uniform circular motion. It can be both positive or negative in value. So that any time the sign is positive or negative of the acceleration, um, it is the same as the sign of the velocity. The object will speed up. If the signs are opposite, the object will slow down. So acceleration is a vector quantity and when either velocity or direction changes, there is an acceleration or deceleration. So to accelerate an object, it requires the application of some type of force. Here we have an example problem that asks us to solve for both velocity and for speed so that we can see the difference between the two. The uh, quarterback throws a pass to a defender on the other team who intercepts the football. The defender had to run 50 meters away from the quarterback to catch the ball and then 15 meters back towards the quarterback before he's tackled. The entire time of the play was 8 seconds. So we're going to begin with the initial distance as being 0. And when we look at the distance that the defender ended up away from the quarterback, they were 35 meters. They ran out 50 meters and then back 15 meters towards the quarterback. So we subtract the difference and that's where we get the 35. The play took a total of 8 seconds. So we uh, do the math and we get 4.38 meters per second. Now speed equals distance divided by time. And so we look at the total distance that the player ran. And so they ran the 50 meters and then they ran 15 more, we add those up, so we get a total distance of 65 meters divided by the time of 8 seconds, and so we get a speed of 8.12 meters per second. Here we have a uh, velocity problem that goes back to the vector problems on uh, our earlier videos. So we have a pitcher that can throw a ball with a velocity of 125 kilometers per hour, relative to the ground. Now that's going to be our horizontal right across here. If he throws the ball with a velocity uh, when a uh, crosswind of 28 kilometers per hour is blowing from left to right, uh, what is the velocity of the, uh, the ball with respect to the ground? So we have our 125 kilometers, we have our 28. We're going to go ahead and draw this in and then we come up with our angle theta. And if you will remember from our earlier um, formulas, 
To find this angle, we can take our opposite divided by our adjacent, and if we take the inverse tangent of that, and I've got that formula right here, arc tangent is inverse tangent or second tangent. So second tangent of 28 divided by 125, and we get an angle of 12 degrees. Now I placed some formulas here for us to finish out our problem. And so we're trying to find out this area right here. And so to find this area, we've just found our uh, angle as 12. To find this, what we can do is we can use this formula right here that says that we can take the sine of 12 equals the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. And so we would uh, do that. We would work this around, get sine of 12 uh, times the hypotenuse equals the opposite side. Divide each side by sine. We would end up getting our hypotenuse equals our opposite divided by our sine of 12. Plug that in. Work it out. And we would get 130 kilometers per hour. Now we could also have used this formula as well and did the cosine and did the adjacent. Uh, I just chose this one. Now here I have a problem. Um, we say suppose you're driving uh, 90 kilometers an hour and suddenly you see red lights flashing and you've got to pull over and it takes 20 seconds to come to a stop. What was your average, average acceleration in meters per second squared? So the first thing I did was I took my 90 kilometers per hour and I needed to convert this over to uh, meters per second. And so I know that one kilometer has a thousand meters and that's going to cancel out of my kilometers. I needed to now cancel out of hours and convert that to seconds. I know that one hour has uh, 60 minutes. My uh, hours cancel out. And then I know that one minute has 60 seconds. My minutes cancel out, and so now I'm in meters per second. Once I do the math, I come up with 25 meters per second. Now I can proceed to, uh, to solving the problem. So to calculate the acceleration, I take the uh, change in velocity divided by the change in time. To get my change in velocity, I take my final velocity minus my beginning velocity. To get my change in time, I take my final time minus my beginning time. Now I want my final velocity to be zero. In other words, that I've stopped the car. I'm currently moving at 25 um, meters per second. So I would have zero meters per second minus 25 meters per second. So on this top area, I get a negative 25 meters per second. Uh, my time change, my final time change was um, 20 seconds. My initial uh, time was 0, so 20 minus 0, I get 20. So I end up with negative 25 meters per second divided by 20 seconds. I get that in order to uh, stop the car, I need to be moving at negative 1.25 meters per second squared. Now here we have a problem where we have a rocket ship is going to land on the moon in exactly two hours. There's only one problem. It's going 17,000 miles an hour. What does its acceleration need to be in miles per second squared to land on the moon safely at 0.0, .0 miles per hour? Now the first thing we want to do is we want to um, start by converting our uh, 17,000 miles per hour into uh, miles per second. So, so what we've done here is I've placed my 17,000 miles per hour. I need to convert it out of miles per hour and get this into miles per second. We know that one uh, hour has 60 minutes. That allows us to cancel out of hours. We know that one minute has 60 seconds. We cancel out of minutes. We are now in um, miles per second, which is what we needed to be in. We do the math and we get 4.72 miles per second. Now to calculate our acceleration, we have to take our change in velocity divided by our change in time. To get our change in velocity, we take our final velocity minus our beginning velocity. To get our change in time, we take our final time minus our uh, initial time. Now our final velocity needs to be zero uh, miles per second. Uh, 
You'll notice that we calculated our initial velocity as 4.72 miles per second. So we have uh, 0 minus 4.72. To get this number right here, our problem said that we had 2 hours. We needed to convert the 2 hours into seconds. So there are 7,200 uh, 7, seconds in an hour. That's where we got this. We do our math. And so we find out that uh, the rocket needs a constant acceleration of 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth miles per second squared in a direction opposite to the rocket's initial velocity in order to land on the moon at a speed of 0 miles per second and touch down lightly. So our answer is negative 6.6 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth miles per second. Here we have a problem where we have a bullet comes to rest in a block of wood in 1.0 times 10 to the negative 2 seconds with an acceleration of negative 8.0 times 10 to the 4th meters per second squared. What is the original speed in meters per second? Well, because we're calculating uh, the change in velocity, what we're going to have to do is take the acceleration and multiply it times our time. And so here we have our acceleration, and then here we have our time. Do our math, and so we get... If the bullet lost 800 meters per second of speed and it comes to rest at V equals zero, it must have been going 800 meters per second originally. And so our answer is 800 meters per second. And so as you get to more advanced uh, physics problems, you're going to see that some of these equations right along here are going to be applied quite often to our uniformed acceleration. So let's look at some of these examples. Here we have a problem where we have a ball that starts from rest and it rolls down an incline plane at a constant acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. We have to determine what the velocity of the ball was after 8.5 seconds and how far the ball rolls in 10 seconds. So down here we have our initial velocity as 0, our acceleration is 2 meters per second squared. We have a time change of 8.5 seconds and we have our second time change of 10 seconds. What we do not know is our final velocity. We have our basic equations over here. So to begin with, we're going to take uh, to find our final velocity. We have our initial velocity plus our acceleration times our change in time. Now we know that our initial velocity was 0 meters per second squared. We had an acceleration of 2 meters per second and our change in our first time was 8.5 seconds. We do the math, and so we get um, 17 meters per second as far as the velocity of the ball after 8.5 seconds. Next, we want to find out how far the ball rolls in 10 seconds. So to get our change in distance, we're going to take our initial velocity times our change in our second time plus one-half our acceleration times our uh, change in our second time squared. We know our initial velocity is uh, zero. We know that uh, we have one-half times our acceleration, which was 2 meters per second squared. Our change in time 2 was 10. We had to square that. We do the math, and we get that the ball moved about 100 meters. Finally, we have our uh, last example problem. A car traveling at 88 kilometers per hour undergoes a constant deceleration of 8 meters per second squared. How long does it take the car to stop? and how far does the car move after the brakes are applied. So we have our initial velocity is 88 meters per second. Our final velocity should be zero as we are stopped. Our acceleration, we're deaccelerating at negative eight uh, meters per second squared. We do not know our change in time or our change in distance. I've written down our basic formulas that you saw uh, on our earlier slides. Okay, so we're going to begin by determining how long it takes for the car to come to a stop. We're going to use our uh, change in time will equal our final velocity minus our beginning velocity divided by our acceleration. Our final velocity is 0 kilometers per hour. Uh, our initial velocity was 88 kilometers per hour. And our deacceleration was negative 8 meters per second squared. Now we need to convert out of um, meters per second squared and we need to cancel out to get into units of time only. 
we know that we have a thousand meters and one kilometer. What this is going to do is allow us to cancel out of our uh, meters right here. We also, when we do our math here, we have our answer in kilometers per hour. Now that's going to allow us to cancel out kilometers right here and right here. Now to get out of our hours, we know that one hour has 300 and uh, or 3,600 seconds in an hour. That's going to allow us to cancel out of our hours, and therefore we would be in seconds. Once we do all of the math, we would have 3.1 seconds. Finally, we're asked to determine the distance that the car travels after the brakes are applied. Our change in distance equals our final velo our initial velocity times our change in time plus one half acceleration, our second change in time. We know that our uh, initial velocity was 88 kilometers per hour. Our change in time was 3.1 seconds. Uh, right here we have that conversion of a thousand meters in one kilometer, which allows us to cancel out of kilometers. Right down here, we have the uh, 3,600 seconds per hour, which again allows us to cancel out of our hours. Then we add one half. Uh, our final, uh, our acceleration was negative eight uh, meters per second squared. Our time squared here was this number here. So that's 3.1 seconds. We square that. We then do the math. And so we would have an answer of 37 meters.